what's up y'all I'm here to go over this uh, uh, Malinaji Bronner fight card on Heyman time oops I'm sorry Showtime boxing now let's go through this because this is the real you know you're going to get the raw here I don't care who event it is who I'm cool with who we I with, who we tight with, you always gonna get the real from me. That's just the way it is. Going into the first fight, the first card that I've seen, we had what was that guy named? The guy who I betted on to beat Saki Obika. What was his name? Petrelli or something like that? I sound like Morris Day in uh, Purple Rain, Stachigrachi, something like that. <laughs> but his name was, uh, what was that guy's name? Paraban. Yeah, that's it. Paraban. I know it was something like that. But Paraban outboxed uh, Saki Obika, and I don't know what the, the Bernard Hopkins and Showtime, they were so caught up in talking to each other. They were missing the body work Paraban was putting in, countering every time Bika opened up. They looking at Bika landing up top. Paraban was tearing this boy's body up, breaking him down. That's why he was fading late. Paraban was working him out. I had him winning that fight 7-5. to five. I just knew I had that money in the bag. But, you know, Saki Obika, since he signed with Heyman, there, there it is. He's going to be thrown up there near the top. So that was screw job number one to start the day. And boy, did it roll over to the second fight. The rematch. Seth Mitchell. Mayhem Mitchell versus Jonathan Banks. And I'm finna tell y'all right now, ladies and gentlemen. You watched a fixed fight. That fight was fixed. And if you don't believe me, go back and watch it again on your DVR. And I don't care who don't like it, that's a fixed fight. That's exactly what that was. And you know why it was fixed? Because Jonathan Banks is the trainer of Vladimir Klitschko. And the winner of this fight would have had to fight Vladimir Klitschko. That's why he's there. Now, if Banks win, he's not going to fight the guy that he got to train. He'd rather go and train Vladimir Klitschko to fight Seth Mitchell than go ahead and be world champion himself. So, for this disgrace by Jonathan Banks, I'm just glad Emmanuel wasn't here to see it. But you can't fool Sugar Hill, and you damn sure ain't gonna fool me. I knew you threw the fight. You could have finished Mitchell. You hurt Mitchell again and let this guy recuperate, and then wouldn't open up no more to try to finish the guy. It was, it was ridiculous. It's a disgrace. He didn't even know how to throw the fight. That's how bad it was. Mitchell was so scared to come in after he got hurt. It, it was just a, this fight was a joke. I apologize to any boxing fan that had to endure watching that fight. Klitschko is going to knock out Seth Mitchell in less than three, four rounds. So if anybody is watching that fight, I wouldn't even watch it. I'm still disgusted over what just happened just watching that fight. So that's screw job number one. Now that's screw job number two, my fault. And now here comes the main event. Adrian the Problem Bronner versus Paul the Magic Man Malinaj. Now going into this fight, we heard all this craziness about a groupie. We heard all this stuff to promote the fight. Okay, that's over. Now it's time to fight. From the opening bell, Paul and Malinaj is doing everything he's supposed to do to Adrian Bronner. He's giving him feints. He's staying on his left shoulder. He's jabbing up and keeping his head out of position where Adrian Bronner doesn't have anything to hit. Adrian is coming in the game, doing exactly what I thought he was going to do. Try to fill it out, test Paulie's power, see what he got, just block him and just walk him down with his body. And he's trying to take Paulie's confidence, shaking his head, saying, you're not hurting me, you're not doing anything. And he's just implying his will on him. 
What is working for Adrian, though, is Paulie's working too fast. He's too worked up. He can get his poise or settle down in the fight, which is going to exhaust him later on in the fight. But he's fighting hard, early, which is, is good and is bad, because you're just waiting for him to break down. After the first four rounds of this, um, Braun is starting to step it up a little bit, throwing some combinations, starting to be a little bit more physical with Paulie. Paulie is starting to slow down. From all the activity, he's becoming slow and standing in front of Brauner instead of moving side to side and got his chin straight in the air and he's there for quick counter shots by Brauner. Just flashy one punch shots. And Brauner coming into this fight was a high favorite to not win the fight to destroy Paul Malinaj. All the fans are telling me how this fight was going to be a destruction of Paul Malinaj. And this was his moment. They telling me like if this this is what you're supposed to do, if if this is what separates him from Floyd Mayweather, in my opinion, when Floyd got a guy in front of him, he destroys him. There's no doubt that Floyd Mayweather is the winner of the fight. Broner has yet to see to seize control of rounds. He will land strong and hard punches, but he wants to land those strong hard punches so much. He's not going to put in the work of working behind the jab. Now, Broner didn't work behind the jab, go in and try to commit to the body, which was working for him earlier. That's what loosened Paulie up. He threw some great left body shots that was just hard. But it wasn't enough work going on in there. It was too much posing. And then when Paulie back was on the rope, he didn't take advantage of it. The majority of the time, he threw a little one, little two shots, little flash punches. But other than that, he was BSing. It was BSing in there. And if you know Adrian Bronner, you know how you fight, you like, what is this? What you doing? You know, like, you know, do your thing. And he wasn't doing his thing. He wasn't trying to put the work in. He was actually letting Braun, I mean, Paulie Malinaji outwork him. Every round. Now, his poly work rate was supposed to decrease. Polly ended up coming back after the, he declined and he came back up. So I'm like, well, what what you doing in the fight? In the fight, I had a 7-5 for Broner. But it could have easily been 6-6. Six, six. Easy. Because a lot of those rounds, I just gave to, some of those rounds I gave to Broner because he landed the harder punches. Where Braun, I mean, Malinaji landed more shots. But if you Pauly, I mean, but if you Brauna, you can't really brag on this fight. This is a fight you won by split decision legitimately on a split decision. So there is no bragging over something like this. This is a fight that could have went either way. That's not the fight people thought Adrian Brauna was going to come in here and do. They thought Adrian Brown was going to come in here and smoke Paulie Malinaji and make a statement. They set this up to be your statement fight. That's why they picked him. This was your statement fight. This was your Gotti night. And what happened on your Gotti night? When they fed Floyd to Gotti, they said Floyd is going to smoke him like a pack of cools. Anybody in, the, in, the, in the, that knows anything about boxing knew Floyd was going to smoke this dude. Smoke him out. And what did he do? He smoked him out. So when they give you your Gotti moment, you're supposed to take advantage of your Gotti moment, right? But no. All we end up saying was, man, Paulie, Paulie ain't as, was, wasn't as done as we thought. Now the people lean, lean into that. Now they saying, man, maybe Paulie right. Maybe we was giving Bronner too much credit. Maybe there is something we got to see him in there with stronger guys. Because... If you put a stronger puncher in there tonight, Broner might not be walking out of there with no belt. So this is a wake-up call for you, Adrian Broner. This was a wake-up call. You better get off that BS and Frenchy Montanas and all that and get back in that gym. And world star hip-hop, you need to tell them, like, look, man, I'll come back to you <laughs> after I get myself back to where I need to be. 
Cause I, I won tonight But I wasn't supposed to just win tonight <laughs> I was supposed to look good While winning And I didn't accomplish that So that's where That's where they at right now And for that judge Tom Shrek from New York Who was 117 111 See that's what I'm talking about Everybody know that was a Heyman judge but it happens all the time, so everybody said, well, it don't matter. Just forget it. He had it for Broner. But they, they, they had him. He was going to vote for Broner anyway. That was his job. And they, they used the New York judge, too. You know, they were like, oh, let's use the New York guy so he can't, you know, it won't, they won't say it was a hometown judge that just did him in. Let's just use Tom Shrek. And I don't know if it's the Shrek from the damn movies or whatever the hell he is. He probably is some green ogre sitting there going, Looking around, he wasn't watching the fight. He was looking around, looking for Donkey or somebody. Donkey, <laughs> seen Fiona? <laughs> he damn sure wasn't watching the fight. One seventeen, one eleven. No, that, that that's just ridiculous. Cause now you tarnish the fight. Malinaji would have been cool if they just did another one fifteen, one thirteen for Broner. It'd have been the same result. But now you gave it you giving the man his respect. You know, you giving him his respect for the effort he put in in the ring. That makes sense. Everything else didn't make sense. And that's how I saw it. Uh I don't know how y'all scored the fight. Y'all let me know what y'all think. But I just think a lot of things. Oh yeah, and there's things going on in, in over in New York too. Midwest versus New York out in. I mean, this is turning into a street affair out there. Everybody hitting me up on the phone because I got people out there from Chicago, Cincinnati, <laughs> people on the East Coast hitting me up saying, "Hey man, it's going down out here, man. I'm gonna bust somebody's head." I'm like, "Hey man, just be be safe, man. Get home." Everybody be cool, be safe. The fighters fought the fight already. It's all over. You know, the thing Broner did at the end just ignited something that didn't need to be ignited. He should have just walked off respectfully and just left that alone. I mean, she shouldn't have been brought in in the first place. She's a groupie. And that's her place is to be in groupie exile. <laughs> you don't need to know her name, no interviews, no nothing. So let's, let's leave that out of it. So everybody be safe. Tell me what you think. I'm out. Popcorn.